Good morning guys. Today is World Diabetes Awareness Day. And to help celebrate that and create awareness, we've partnered with our friends at Gluco to do a day in the life of a diabetic. We're all right, we're all right. The sun comes up tomorrow. We'll big steal or bottle. A new game plan. Hey, good morning, Aspen. Morning. How are you doing this morning? Hey, uh, let's check your BG, okay? My diabetes bag is upstairs. I'll go grab it. Okay, see you in a second. Aspen has to have a bag with her all the time. Uh, it has all of her diabetes supplies. It's got special supplies in case she goes low. Uh, it's got backup supplies in case her pump doesn't work for some reason. If it stops working, she still has to be able to get insulin or else she can go dangerously high. Okay, so here's how Aspen checks her BG. She puts the test strip into the Omnipod PDM, which also doubles as a glucose what? tester. So she uses an alcohol swab or she has to wash her hands because if there's any sugar on her fingers, it can mess up the reading. <laughs> she takes that, she wiped away the first drop, and now she's getting a reading. And it takes about four or five seconds, and there you see, her number is 182. So Aspen, what is in range for you? 70 to 150. So you're just a little bit out of range, so it's gonna to wanna to do a correction. What else is it gonna ask you? It's gonna ask me if I wanna eat now. Next. So are you gonna eat, eat now? Are you gonna eat now? Yeah. And then, what are you gonna have? A bowl of cereal? Okay, so let's look on there and see how many carbs it is. Is 25. 25. The milk is 12 grams of carbs. Does she want a cup of milk? Would you want that much milk? Would you do a cup of milk? Uh, probably like half a cup. Oh, half a cup. Okay, good catch. So, how many carbs will that be? Instead of 12, six. if you have half, it'll be six. So, 25 plus six. So, as you can see, there's lots of math throughout the day. 31. That's right. This is a relatively simple meal, but there's still a lot of math that has to be done. Okay, so now, given the carbs, it's going to give her 3.4 units. And this is my pump. her pump is doing it. This so, this is now putting the insulin into her. That's their Omnipod. And when it's done, it will beep. Do I have to wait 15 minutes today? Good question. So, every time she takes insulin, it takes a while for the insulin to kick in in her body. About 15 minutes. And so she 15? takes... 15? Is that what you said? No, just 15. 15. I thought you said 50. I was like, what the heck? After 15 minutes? <laughs> so, after she waits 15 minutes, then she can eat the food. So, do you need to set a timer? Yes, please. So I can eat soon. Siri, start a 15 minute timer. Oh, she did it. There you go. Counting down. Alright, so now I'm about to leave with the kids to go to school with the other kids. Aspen stays here with Amy and Eli in homeschools. And so, hey Aspen, you've got about one minute left and then you can eat, okay? Okay. Alright, go ahead and eat breakfast. Can you help me get it? Right? Yep. You need what? One cup of cereal and half a cup of milk? Well, three-fourths cereal and <laughs> half a cup of milk. Okay. There you go. Three. <laughs> and then we gotta do half a cup of milk. <laughs> there we go. Alright, now you have to finish everything in a bowl, right? Mm -hmm. Alright, I gotta go to school. Love ya. You have to go to school? Well, take the kids to school. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go to work. Love you. Bye. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, see you later. Hey guys, I'm Amy from the Dale Tribe. If you do not know what type 1 diabetes is, it's basically an autoimmune disease in which your immune system is doing its job and getting rid of bad guys and then it gets a little overzealous and attacks your pancreas and destroys the part of your pancreas that produces insulin. And when it does that, you will then have to give yourself insulin externally, either through shots, some people use what are called pins, some people use syringes, some people use insulin pumps, and there's lots of different kinds of insulin pumps. But one way or another, you'll have to get insulin in your body on a consistent basis because your body's no longer producing it. 
The reason insulin is important is because insulin regulates sugar in your body. So if you eat not even just sugar, like not even just candy, but if you eat bread, there's a lot of carbs in that and it kind of turns into sugar in your blood and your body needs insulin to help process that. So what happens in a type one diabetic is their blood sugar will slowly just start, or not so slowly, just start to rise. And so it will start to get higher and higher and higher and higher, which can make them really, really sick and can cause what's called DKA, which is where their body just basically starts shutting down. So we wanted to show you what the day-to-day -day life of living with this disease is. Aspen has an insulin pump. She has an Omnipod insulin pump. She also has another device, which is a Dexcom, and that is a continuous glucose monitor. So what that does is that enables us to see her blood sugar like almost all the time. And we can't treat off of that, so if we're gonna give her a big bolus of insulin, we need to actually do a finger prick to make sure that it's accurate. But the Dexcom is fantastic because it'll give us an idea of what her blood sugar is uh, at the moment and where it's headed. So today happens to be a day where we have to change both of them. This is one of the things we need. This is to apply, this is to put the Dexcom on. This is the Omnipod insulin pump she's chosen today. We have a little parrot on it, it's very cute. The other thing we have in here is we have blind bags. And so we just try to make it a little bit easier, you know, on her and just give her a little reward for being so brave. I'm gonna open this today because I haven't opened these before. Okay, so now Aspen's going to deactivate her both things, both? her Dexcom. Yeah, you can deactivate both. So she's gonna deactivate them so that they're ready to take off. Stop sensor, stop sensor. Okay, so there we go. They're both being deactivated. We're hearing some beeps. So now what we can do is we can take the Unisolve and we can start getting them off. Okay, so let's see this. See that little thing sticking out right there? That's the little bit that goes into her, under her skin and then it keeps track of how her blood sugar's doing. And now we will see her insulin pump being taken off. Is your arm getting tired of holding up? Yeah, I'm really yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. So you see that little thing sticking out? That little, looks like a little tiny straw poking out? That's called the cannula. And that is the bit that goes into Aspen's skin and shoots in insulin when she needs it. We're gonna start with Dexcom, which is the continuous glucose monitor. And you probably want it about here-ish, Aspen, all right. Here's the applicator for the Dexcom. So we're just gonna start by taking off the Heel. And then we'll find the spot where the sticky is. Put it right on there. And then you just smooth it down from the inside so it doesn't have like weird wrinkles in it. Okay, then we're gonna take this little protector thing off. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. So then we'll push this one in and then pull this one back. And that's it. Oh, then we take this What the out. heck? I didn't feel anything. Really? That's awesome. This is the actual sensor that will take the information from here and put it into the little thing or your phone or wherever it's going. So we're just gonna clean this and then we're gonna put it right on here. And then you're just gonna use this little thing and go there you, go. And you can take this off. Oh. So there it is, the finalized Here's piece. This is our Omnipod. Each little Omnipod comes with a little syringe and needle. So now the first thing it tells you to do is to fill the pod with insulin. That's pretty important. You wouldn't want to put an empty pod on you. So now we're going to get the air levels out if we can. Okay. Okay, so now there's a little hole right here. A little spot spot right there where you stick the syringe in and then you just fill it up. You'll hear two beeps. And there you go. That means yay. The insulin's all in there. And then you're going to dispose of your needle in a sharps container. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to hit next on here. 
and it is going to prime the pod. So you'll hear it kind of clicking. Find some skin tack on there. Make it nice and sticky. And now we'll stick it on here. We'll do the same thing where we kind of smooth out the stuff, the adhesive backing so it doesn't get any weird wrinkles in it. And then on this one, what we do is we get to this point, we say okay, and then it says start, and start's what will get the cannula in. So Aspen gets to push that herself. I squeeze it up and get it ready, and she gets to push it. So that big click was the cannula going in. Okay, oh it matches your shirt nicely. Awesome job Aspen. Good and then job. here's the mess at the end. Yep, and now you have to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> okay Aspen, what are you doing? So we have a tradition when we put anything in this jar, so we need to drop it in, put the lid on of course, and then we have to Nice, sharp stance. Okay, so Aspen got hungry for a snack before we start homeschooling. So she's gonna do a finger prick and see where she's at. She wants to have some yogurt. Yummy yo yogurt. Which is a good snack that she loves to have a lot. And it says on here that it is- 26 carbs. 26 carbs. I'm checking, I'm making, I'm looking. She's 259. So let's do a correction and give insulin for this. Okay, so now we're taking a break from homeschool and Aspen's gonna go jump on the trampoline. So we'll set a temp basil. If she's gonna do something really active, like jump on the trampoline or ride her bike or something like that, we'll do a temp basil, which means we can like decrease the amount of insulin that's going into her body uh -huh. so that she uh -huh. doesn't go low because we don't want her to get too much insulin. Yeah. A lot of things can affect blood sugar, exercise, what you eat, Singing. hormones, excitement, sickness. All kinds of other things too, I'm sure that singing. I forgot, but I don't think singing can actually affect it. <laughs> okay, so Aspen for lunch today is having berries and cheese stick pizza. <laughs> so she's having some blackberries and raspberries mixed together, and a cup of those is about about 14, 15. 14, 15 carbs, something like that. So she's gonna put those in. And and got a cup there. Mm-hmm. And then a cheese stick pizza is basically zero carb. So we just take these and we melt them and we put some pepperonis with it on a plate and it's kind of like a crustless pizza. Check your blood sugar and make sure that you don't need a correction, a correction. or any of that kind of stuff. Okay, 208, still running a little high. So we're gonna correct. And we're gonna correct and we're gonna tell it how much carbs you're having when you're just having 15 carbs. Should I put 17 in into the bunch of whipped cream? Yeah, do that, that sounds good. See you guys, this is the uh, cheese stick pizza. Yummy. I already finished my berry. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. Ooh, and she's so dancy. She's excited about this pizza. Pizza! <laughs> All right, so lunch is done, and now we can go on about our day. So guys, we cooked curry for dinner for the family, and the clan is over here enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Aspen, though, not a big curry fan. So she asked if she could have yogurt for dinner. How many carbs is it? 19. All right, let's do a finger prick. Carbs. Okay. 165, you're basically in range, well done. All right, so tell it how many carbs you're having. 19. All right. It's bedtime. And I feel shaky. Aspen feels a little shaky, shaky so she's shaky. gonna take some. Shaky, shaky. She's gonna take her BG again. <gasps> and check it out, see where we're at. I've been crazy, huh, Daisy? I am 93. 93. I have to have a hard carb because if she's going to bed and she's a little bit lower than we want her, then we'll give her insulin and a hard carb, and then she'll have a little bit more boost to keep her up overnight. Or if she has a low, when she has a low, which she didn't have today at all, so we didn't get to show you that, but if she has a low, we give her 
15 fast acting carbs, some candy that's about 15 carbs, or some juice or something like that. And then we wait 15 minutes and we check her again. And as long as she's in range the second time we check her, if she's not in range the second time you check her, then you give her candy or juice again. If she is in range, then you give her a hard carb. So guys, one of the things that we have to do um, as Aspen's parents is we have to look at her blood sugar numbers and make decisions about adjustments to her treatment. And we're able to do that because we use Gluco and Gluco is our sponsor for the uh, episode today. Gluco is great because it takes the data from her PDM, which uh, gets finger pricks and keeps track of how much insulin that she's dosed. Um, and it also takes the data from her Dexcom uh, via her phone and it takes it all and puts it in one place. And so the Dexcom data gets automatically pulled over um, by the Apple Health app. It synchronizes everything. And then the data from the Omnipod, we actually have to sync. And so I'll show you how we do that. We plug in her Omnipod into the computer and then we log into Gluco and I'm able to click on this sync Omnipod button. And then I click on the upload button and I pick the file. So now it's successfully uploaded and I can click on view data. And now what's great is I'm able to go in to the primary one I use is this BG graphs. And this is going to show a scatter graph of the last 30 days. Now we made some big changes to her dosage a couple of weeks ago. So I can look at this two week graph and you'll see that for the last two weeks, she has been a little bit high overnight and then pretty much in range through the day and then seems to be spiking with dinner and then going back into range except for right late at night she seems to be bumping back up. And so I can compare that to the two weeks before and you'll see that before she was high a bunch and then in range for a little bit and then high again. And what's great is I can take this information and I can click here on create report and I will create this report and it's going to generate a PDF file that I can share with her endocrinologist. And so I can email this to them and then we can have a conversation with them about her dosing and we're looking at exactly the same information. They have all these same graphs. At the end of the report it shows all the settings that she currently has, what her basal rates are, um, what her bolus settings are, and so it makes sure that we're on exactly the same page when we're talking with her uh, medical team about making changes. So we love the Gluco app um, for a number of reasons. F first of all, it syncs all the data from the different places. So instead of looking at one report for her finger pricks and another report for how, much, how many carbs she's had and another report for her CGM, uh, another report for her dosing, all of that is in, together in one place where we can look at it and see exactly how it's impacting her, her blood sugar levels. Um, the other thing that we love about it is that we're able to share this data with her doctors. Another thing that's really nice about the Gluco app on the iPhone is that you can actually set reminders on there. So you can set a reminder if you want to do something at the same time every day. And then you can also track additional events inside the app. You can go in and put notes, you can put meals, all of that kind of stuff. So it gives you one central place to have all the data. And that's one of the things that can be really overwhelming when you're dealing with managing type 1 diabetes is just the number of different pieces of information. And so to get them all in one place, be able to look at them on graphs, and really kind of wrap our heads around it and make sense of it, uh, is really, really super helpful. Gluco is actually free for Omnipod users. So if you're an Omnipod user, just check with your doctor and they can tell you how to get connected. Okay guys, it's midnight. And I'm just checking Aspen's BG on here. And it looks like she's gonna be good for the night. Before we had Dexcom, or if for some reason Dexcom isn't reading, then we would go and do a finger prick in the middle of the night. So there's a lot of up at night, a lot of headlamps come in useful kind of times. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this look at what it's like to live with type 1 diabetes. And I hope it gave you a little bit of insight into our lives. I, I'm sorry, Jacksepticeye just came in my brain. And I was going to say, punch that like button in the face like a boss. Okay, I'm going to try again. So thanks again to Gluco for sponsoring this video. We hope you enjoyed this look into our lives and what it's like to live with type 1 diabetes. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. 
And if you have not joined the tribe yet, please hit the subscribe button and become part of our tribe. A channel that you might enjoy that has been really helpful to us is Diabetic Danica. So if you guys are type 1 or know someone type 1, that is a channel that you might want to recommend to them. So thanks so much for watching.